Welcome back to the Zero to Six Figure Crypto Portfolio Series. This is episode nine. And for those of you wondering, or for those of you new here, this is my series where we talk about my portfolio. I show you on screen all the assets I'm holding, what I'm selling, what I'm doing, and I kind of talk you through the rationale behind it all. So this is episode nine. If you haven't watched any of the other episodes, then I highly recommend you go to YouTube and go and have a look and watch all the other episodes where you kind of see what I'm doing, why I'm doing things and learn along the way. Yeah. It's a long-term portfolio. It's going to take a little while, but slowly, slowly, we're hopefully going to make our way there. Anyway, without further ado, this is episode nine, and we're currently at a portfolio value of $12,390. Um, and I've made a couple of changes from last episode. Nothing too drastic, but what I have done is I have actually sold off uh, more than just slightly more than half of the Arbitrum stack that I had. Um, the Arbitrum airdrop obviously came a couple of weeks ago now, um, and uh, I think there was some FUD uh, going on regarding the Arbitrum governance. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I'll try and leave a thread, a, a Twitter link down below that will basically show you kind of what happened. Um, it wasn't very good. I wasn't very pleased with it. And uh, I think because of that, I probably I probably trigger fingered a little bit and probably went a bit too fast. Um, but yeah, I sold off some of the position there. And uh, the, the thing is, I still want exposure to Arbitrum because I still think that the Arbitrum ecosystem is fantastic. There's so much value there and I think governance does play a part there. Yes, there isn't a value accrual in the same way like Ethereum has, but I still think there is some value there. And so I still wanted to have some exposure. Um, so I didn't sell the whole stack. I still do think that, you know, Arbitrum, the token could run up to, you know, $1.50, maybe $2. Um, but I think, uh, look, the market isn't looking too good at the moment. It's Bitcoin dominance these days. Um, uh, Bitcoin has cleared past the $30,000 mark. So if we have a look here, uh, yeah, 30200 so uh, and, and alts are really kind of bleeding against their Bitcoin valuation. So uh, at the moment, it doesn't look like it's the right time for something like that to happen. But yeah, I still think that something like that could happen. And I still want exposure long term to Arbitrum. Look, it could go down to a dollar. It could go even below a dollar. But I still think uh, I'd like to have some exposure there. Um, and so I've still kept some. But obviously, I have sold and bought some USDC with it. And so the question is really, what am I doing now? Um, well, at the moment, I'm kind of continue to build this USDC stack. stack. Um, ideally, I'd like to uh, make USDC maybe 40-50% of the portfolio, which is what it is at the moment. Uh, and I think over time, uh, when conditions are more favorable, we'll kind of utilize that USDC. Um, but in the meantime, I'm happy to keep the USDC and I'm happy to farm with it. Uh, and I will have a video for you guys in the next few days or so showing some of the different farming opportunities around at the moment uh, and where I'm allocating some of my capital there. So uh, stay tuned for that. So yeah, we still have Arbitrum, we still have our FXS, uh, and uh, despite uh, Frax share kind of kind of going down somewhat, um, I mean we're still up quite quite nicely on it. Um, and uh, I think if it does come down any further, I'll probably continue to add to that position as well um, because. Uh, I like Frax and uh, I think Frax V3 is coming out pretty soon. So hopefully we see some interesting stuff there. Redacted recently announced Dinero and Dinero is something that's pretty exciting. Uh, and so I have uh, added a little bit here. I mean, it's still a relatively small position, but you know, we're getting close to that $1,000 mark in terms of our butterfly holding. Uh, and as you can see, uh, following the news, uh, it did kind of go up a little bit. So we're about 20% up on our butterfly position there. Uh, ETH has been uh, a monster since June last year, really, um, going from below $1,000 to almost doubling. Um, and, um, or from December, actually, I believe it was around $1,000. Um, so yeah, almost doubling in price. Uh, we're massively up on the small amount of ETH that we bought. <laughs> it's, a, it's a shame that it didn't buy more. I think at the time I was probably feeling a little bit um, hopeful that uh, Ethereum will kind of fall down in price, but it just never did. And uh, I do definitely need more Ethereum. This, this portfolio is definitely uh, kind of underexposed to Ether. Uh, and so definitely need to add some more there. Uh, next, we've got Lyra, and Lyra is probably the one asset that's performing very badly at the moment. And I think part of that is because of Lyra's high inflation at the moment. There's so many rewards uh, going on with Lyra. And uh, secondly, lack of value accrual. With Lyra, I think there is a chance that I could actually sell the position. Um, and I don't mind selling, you know, in the red. Sometimes you got to cut your losses, but the thing is, look, here's the thing. I love the Lyra platform. It's fantastic. I use it 
liquidity providing on Lyra is fantastic. It's just the way that the fees are kind of go around. So maybe I'll hold on to it for now, but really I'm looking forward to seeing how Risk and IVX both perform. Um, both of them are two option platforms that are not out yet, and I'm hoping that there is some value accrual there that uh, makes their tokenomics more favorable to Lyra. For the time being, I'm happy keeping the Lyra position, but it's something that you know I do need to think about long term anyway. Uh, Look, these are low cap altcoins, so they are going to fluctuate. And if it goes minus 50%, it goes minus 50%. I have to deal with that. Uh, Chainlink has been range bound for such a long time. So yeah, nothing new to say there. Um, and yeah, those are the, uh, how many assets is that? Seven assets that we've got in the portfolio at the moment. I do need to add some more, um, but I think we are kind of rebalancing the portfolio somewhat with some stability. We've got kind of some of the more established uh, coins at the top with our uh, altcoins uh, lower down at the uh, bottom. And we've got a significant USDC holding now as well, uh, which I, I think gives the portfolio a lot more stability going forward. Yes, I do need more Ethereum. Yes, I do need kind of more exposure to other types of assets. We've got a lot of DeFi exposure here, and I probably need to get some exposure to uh, various other uh, aspects of crypto as well. Um, and that's something that you'll see coming over the next few uh episodes potentially if prices become more favorable if we have a look at the chart um here you can see kind of how the portfolio has been going i mean it's been pretty uh, range bound for the last month or so almost um just kind of between since since the arbitrum token came out pretty much um it, despite adding um a, you know a little bit more to the portfolio um and yeah like i said prices are down at the moment um so we'll just have to wait and see but oh here you can see look a lot more stability to the portfolio um yes usdc arb and fxs make up the majority of the portfolio and with time that will these will also come down um but you know i'm glad that we finally have some core you know holdings with usdc now, another question uh, that's just come in my mind, actually, is that you know, some of you will be thinking, why do I hold USDC? Well, I think at the moment, the stablecoin industry is still developing. Um, if I if I held Frax, it's the same as holding USDC. If I hold if I hold DAI, it's almost the same as holding USDC. So the question is, um, should I uh, diversify some of this into USDT? And I might do that, uh, especially because some of the strategies around um, in DeFi at the moment are involving USDT. And so potentially you might see I split that. Uh, and I may also consider going for some other stablecoins. So you might find that the stablecoin um, holdings that I do have uh, do diversify over time as well. I don't want to just be overexposed to one stablecoin. We've made that mistake in the past with UST, so I'm not going to make that mistake again. Um, so yeah, just a quick update really. I mean, nothing too exciting this episode, I'm afraid. Um, we've, like I said, we've just sold some ARB and we've bought a bit of Butterfly and uh, we definitely will hopefully be seeing some more new assets uh, coming in future episodes. So yeah, that's pretty much where we are at the moment. Um, Let's see uh, how the next couple of weeks go. So yeah, it's a big, big, big week. We've got the Ethereum upgrade. So um, we'll hopefully see some volatility in the market. That's what we're here for. I like volatility. So um, uh, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more episodes in the near future.